In this video, I'm going to provide an introduction to the concept of a conjugate prior. In doing so, we're first of all going to define what is meant by a conjugate prior. We're also going to talk about one or two examples of conjugate priors. And we're also going to explain the sort of rationale for why you might use conjugate priors in the first place. OK, so first of all, what do we actually mean by a conjugate prior? How do we define it? Well, the idea here is that if we have a given likelihood function, so let's say our likelihood, which remember is this part of the numerator, so our likelihood is the probability of our data given our choice of theta and given our model choice, if we were to assume that our likelihood function here was normal, so we're talking about a normal distribution there, then the idea is that what we can do is we can choose our prior, so remember that this here is the prior, and if we choose the prior, the probability of theta given our particular model choice, to also be normal, not necessarily having the same mean or anything like that, but just having a normal distribution form, then it turns out if we pick this particular distribution for the prior, then the posterior, which remember is the goal of Bayesian inference, then it happens to be the case after you do quite a bit of mathematics that the posterior in this case also, also turns out to be normal. And note that the posterior here being normal and being of the same form as the prior isn't necessarily the case if I was to choose a different prior distribution in this particular case. If I was to choose, for example, a gamma distribution here for the prior for, uh, in this case, theta, then the posterior would not have this sort of nice, neat form and it wouldn't simply just be a gamma distribution or a normal distribution it would be potentially some rather horrible distribution, which wouldn't be as nice to work with. So the idea is that what we can do is we can choose our, or if we choose our prior distribution in a particularly um, intelligent way, such that it is what we call conjugate to the, in this case, the likelihood, and in all cases, the likelihood, I should say, then it turns out that in that case of choosing a conjugate prior, the posterior has exactly the same form as the prior. OK, so we've already spoken about one example of a prior which is conjugate to the normal distribution, and it turns out to be the case that the normal distribution is conjugate to the normal. But they don't necessarily have to be the same. And an example of this being the case whereby if we have a likelihood which is of the sort of Bernoulli form, so it's sort of theta to the power z times 1 minus theta to the power n minus z here, so we might be thinking about flipping a coin, for example, then the idea here is that if we choose a prior which turns out to be of the form theta to the power a minus 1 times 1 minus theta to the power b minus 1, which actually turns out is a sort of beta distribution, then it turns out that you can work out after quite a lot of mathematics that the posterior distribution is also a beta distribution with the parameters of this new beta distribution depending on the original z a and B, and in this case also N. So in this case, the beta distribution is conjugate to a Bernoulli prior, which means that we get a beta posterior distribution out in the end. OK, so we've gone through a couple of examples. Now I want to explain why would we actually use conjugate priors, because it shouldn't just simply be an arbitrary choice of prior to make the maths easier. There should also be some sort of reason behind the method. So first of all, we should say that by choosing a prior which is necessarily conjugate to the likelihood, this is sometimes and often case um, unrealistic of the situation. So that's the potential cost for choosing a conjugate prior. What are the benefits? Well, the benefits are that we don't necessarily need to do any maths. Because the idea is that if we choose a conjugate prior to a specific likelihood function, then we can just work out the parameters of the posterior by simply using easy sort of formulae to update the parameters of the posterior. And this has already been worked out for us, so you can just look it up in sort of a table and work out the parameters that way rather than having to do any sort of maths on your own. Another benefit to choosing a conjugate prior is that we can actually generate uh, the posterior exactly. 
And this is really beneficial because we don't actually need to use any sort of numeric or computational method to sample from that posterior distribution. We can just derive its analytic form. So that's definitely a benefit. And I should say that even though we have said that it is sometimes unrealistic, it can also provide a sort of window of insight into the more sort of realistic choices of um, prior. So that's definitely a benefit of using a conjugate prior, even though it might not necessarily be completely realistic, it still provides a bit of insight into what might happen if we made the prior a little bit more realistic.